my name is Amelia and I'm an art teacher with Artists for Kids in the North Vancouver School District. This year we are bringing you the AFK ArtReach video series in which we share artwork and art activities. And the activities that we share can be carried out in the classroom, at home, and in many cases outdoors. And this video series is shared on the AFK website. Today I'm going to share with you an art activity inspired by the Canadian artist Anne Meredith Berry. And we will create a painting depicting the skyline and mountains of North Vancouver. As we create our paintings today, we can consider the following question. How can we use layering and atmospheric perspective to show depth in a landscape painting? Anne Meredith Berry was born in Toronto and she moved to Newfoundland. She was very inspired in her art by the coastline and rugged landscape of Newfoundland and Labrador. And she was well known for the bold colors and playful, whimsical patterns that she used in her art. For the majority of the time that she lived in Newfoundland, she lived on the Avalon Peninsula. And there she ran a community printmaking shop called St. Michael's Print Shop. And she worked there as an artist and she also led many workshops and courses for members of the community. This print will be the inspiration for our art activity today. It's called Mountain Sunstorm. First, look closely at the water. Anne Meredith Berry often built up many layers in her artwork. How many colors did she use in just the water? I can count at least eight. Look closely at the kinds of lines that she used in the water to represent the waves in this stormy scene. Now let's take a close look at the mountains. First, can you spot the city perched on the mountains near the ocean? This print has often reminded me of North Vancouver with the big mountains behind the city that is next to the ocean. When we create our paintings today, we'll think about representing North Vancouver. Now look at the mountains in the print that are furthest in the distance. What do you notice about these mountains? How are they different from the mountains that are closer up? Anne Meredith Berry has used a technique here called atmospheric perspective to show depth and distance. Atmospheric perspective is the effect that the atmosphere has on the appearance of objects when you look at them from a distance. In the atmosphere, there's moisture and tiny particles of dust. This causes light to scatter when passing through. Blue light is scattered the most, so things that are in the distance appear bluer. The atmosphere also causes distant forms to have less distinct edges and outlines, and interior detail is softened and blurred in the distance. You can see in Anne Meredith Berry's distant mountains, she's used shades of blue, gray, and green, and she's included less detail and texture in these distant mountains. We'll take inspiration from how she has depicted the mountains in this print. Lastly, take a look at the sky in Anne Meredith Berry's print. What types of details has she included to show that a storm is taking place? What types of colors? What types of lines? We'll use some of these same details in our paintings today. You'll need the following materials for our art activity today. I will now show you the steps to complete our paintings today. You can pause the video as needed to allow time to complete each step. Okay, to begin our project today, make sure you have all your materials set out. And the first thing I'm going to need to start my project today is my pencil. And I'm going to begin by drawing my horizon line. In Anne Meredith Berry's print, you can see her horizon line is here. It's the line that separates the water from the mountains. So we're going to not draw our horizon line right across the middle here. We're going to imagine that our paper is roughly divided up 
into about three sections. And so here, sort of in the bottom third, I'm going to draw my horizon line. And it doesn't need to be a perfectly straight line. And now the next thing I'm going to do is draw in some of the layers that will make up my mountains. And for inspiration, I'm going to look at these pictures of the North Shore Mountains. And my mountains won't be an exact copy of these, but these will give me some ideas for how I will draw my layers. And so you can follow along and draw layers similar to mine, but remember yours don't have to look exactly the same as the layers that I'm about to draw. So I'm gonna start on this side of my paper and make one layer kind of curving down towards the middle, but not coming all the way down to my horizon line. And then I'm gonna draw another layer of mountains a bit higher up here. Again, kind of sloping downwards, having this sort of curving shape coming down towards the middle. And I will draw another layer of mountains. These will be like the hills closer up to the city, like that. And I will move over to the other side of my paper and I will draw a layer of mountains here. Curving downwards. And another layer here. And I'll draw another detail inside this layer. And then I'll draw a hill. This will be one of the hills that are closer up in my picture, close to the city. And then I will join my two layers of mountains together, sloping a layer across like this. And now I'll draw some of those layers that are going to be the layers of mountains that are furthest away in my picture. Okay, and so again, yours don't have to look just like my layers, but as long as you've got a few layers coming from this side and this side and then joining in the middle, you should be good. And now I'm going to draw my skyline of my city. And again, I'm looking at these pictures of North Vancouver and I noticed that there are these rectangular buildings. Some of them are sort of taller, some of them are longer and flatter along the water. So I'm going to represent my buildings using these rectangular shapes. And I'm not including any details inside these buildings, no doors or windows. I'm keeping the shapes pretty simple. Some of the rectangles I will draw kind of coming up further away from the water. And I'm not quite touching my horizon line with these rectangles, just drawing them right above the horizon. And once you've drawn your city, we can then move on to the sky and we'll take inspiration from Anne Meredith Berry's print and the way that she represented the clouds in her sky, these storm clouds. And so I'll draw about three or four different clouds up in my sky. I'm taking inspiration from the kind of shapes that Anne Meredith Berry used to draw her clouds, these kind of curving shapes. Yours do not need to look just like mine. And then I notice some of her clouds kind of float off the side of the paper. So I'll do that as well. Make some of them kind of coming right off the edge of the paper. Okay, and then once you've drawn three or four clouds up in the sky, you're actually done with your pencil. And we will move on to using our black pastels. And the first thing we'll do with our black pastels is simply outline the shape of the clouds. So press nice and hard and get a nice dark line. And once you've outlined your clouds, we're now going to add a bit of shading. I noticed that Anne Meredith Berry included these kind of dark details on her clouds, giving them this sort of intense, gloomy look. So 
I'm going to do this by using this kind of scribbly zigzag line that kind of comes up and down along the tops of my clouds to give them this kind of intensity, this gloomy storm cloud look. And then I also noticed these lines that Anne Meredith Berry included coming out from the clouds. They remind me almost of lines you would see in a cartoon or comic if there was some kind of explosion. So I'm going to include some of these types of lines as well coming out from my sky or coming out from my clouds and some of them will be kind of like dotted dashed lines and some of them are just sort of longer sloping lines giving this feeling of motion or action up in my sky. Okay, and once you've added an assortment of these kind of explosion lines, let's move on to the mountains. And the first thing you're going to do is simply outline the shapes of the mountains that you drew with pencil. And again, press nice and hard with your pastel so you get these nice dark black lines and these shapes of your mountains will really pop out in your finished painting. And now I'm going to add some extra details to add texture to my mountains. And I noticed that Anne Meredith Berry included these kind of zigzag lines to represent the texture of trees, particularly in some of the layers of the mountains a bit closer up in the picture. So I'm going to make this similar kind of texture just using a sort of zigzag line showing the texture of trees and some of the layers of my mountains that are a little bit closer up in the picture, not my most far away layers. And I'm also going to add some curving shapes, this sort of downwards curving shape repeated to give sort of a three-dimensional effect to my mountain, similar to what Anne Meredith Berry has done here. Maybe a few extra sort of lines and details over there. And then once I've finished my mountains and that tree texture and a few curving lines, I'm going to now outline the shapes of my buildings that I drew before. And again, I'm not adding any extra details, no doors or windows, just outlining the rectangles that I drew before. And once I have finished outlining my buildings, I'm going to draw over my horizon line, but I'm not going to draw just a straight line across. I notice Anne Meredith Berry used this kind of wiggly wavy line and it's even kind of broken across her horizon line. So I'm going to take inspiration from her kind of wiggly lines and even leave some little spaces between some of my lines to show that it's this windy wavy day and the water is very choppy. And then I'm going to sprinkle or scatter some wavy lines across the space of my water. And you can see some of them are sort of longer lines, some are a bit shorter. Again, showing that it's a windy, choppy, wavy day. And once I've done that, I'm finished with my black pastel and I'm gonna switch it out for my blue pastel. And I'm going to do the same thing I was just doing with my black pastel and scatter some wavy lines across my water. And some of them are longer, some of them are shorter, some of them overlap with my black lines. And I am then going to take my paper towel and cover up my water and my city. And I'm going to add some more layers of texture to my mountains. I'm going to add some of these zigzag lines that I drew before for the trees and I'm overlapping with my blue pastel, adding some more layers of texture. And Meredith Berry really works in layers, building up colors and textures in her art. So we're trying this out as well today. And maybe I'll even add some other sort of blue layers here, these kind of stripes along some of the layers of my mountain. And in some of the hills in the distance, maybe I'll add some kind of lines and curving shapes. 
And now once I'm done with my mountains, I will cover them up and I'm going to move on to the sky and I'm going to add some blue detail to each of my clouds. Again, using that kind of scribbly line, maybe blending the blue with the black shading that I did before. Again, adding to the intensity of these storm clouds, but not filling in the whole space of the cloud, still leaving some of the cloud white. And then I'm going to add in some more of those dashed sort of dotted lines coming out from the clouds. Okay, and so once I'm done with my blue in the sky, I'm going to move on and use my yellow or golden colored pastel. And I'm going to add a few of those lines and dashes in golden, kind of imagining that the, the sun is mostly covered up by these intense storm clouds, but just some rays of sun are managing to peek out from behind the clouds. And once you've done that, we're going to now cover up just the water. And I'm now going to add some highlights of golden on just the hills that are down close to the city. So kind of imagining that, again, the some rays of sun are escaping from behind the cloud and are just illuminating the, the city and some of the hills that are closer up. Okay, and once you're done adding these little highlights to the uh, hills around the city, you're done with your yellow and we're going to move on to using white. And the first thing we're going to do with the white is scatter some waves of white through the water. So similar to just what we were doing with the blue and the black, I'm just scattering white waves through the water and you can't really see them now, but once we paint, the white will resist the paint and you'll see these highlights of white kind of glinting in the water. And once you've done that, you can cover up the water and we're going to color in all of the buildings that we drew before. And so use a nice dark pressure, hard pressure with your hand and color in each of the buildings, trying to keep the outline that you drew before. And it's okay if it, the white does blend a bit with the black, you'll get these different shades of gray, which is kind of realistic. We do have a lot of concrete and metal buildings, but if you want to clean off your pastel, you could draw a bit on your paper towel and get your pastel back to white again. Okay, and when you're done coloring in all your buildings, cover up your city and your mountains, and we're going to add some highlights of white to each of the clouds and they could some of them could kind of blend with the blue or the black i'm going to add them mostly around the bottoms of my clouds i'm still leaving some white spaces that i'm going to paint in later but adding these white highlights to each of my clouds again using this kind of scribbly zigzag line and then i'm going to add some dashes in the sky Again, building up these layers and colors, similar to how Anne Meredith Berry does. And once I've done that, I'm actually done with my pastels and I'm going to be moving on to painting in a moment. This would be a good moment in your class to maybe pause the video and take a quick movement break. Leave your drawings where they are on your table and perhaps you could walk around your class, do a bit of a gallery walk, and look at your classmates drawings and I think you'll be really surprised already at this point how even though we've all been going through the same steps together each person's artwork is already going to be looking quite unique people are bringing their own artistic style to these artworks already I'm guessing so once you've had a walk around the classroom it's time to paint and we're going to start with painting the water and thinking about building up these layers of color in the water and I'm going to start with using pink and I'm going to add a lot of water to this really bright pink or magenta that I have on my palette. And then I'm going to add some 
waves to my water, building up again those layers of color and waves that I was drawing with my pastel. And notice that I'm using my brush in a way that is really wavy and squiggly. Scattering these pink waves across my water. Some of them are short, some of them are long. And then I'm going to move on, wash my brush, and I'm going to use green. And I have this darker kind of blue green on my palette, and that's the green I'm going to use. And I'm going to layer on some green waves across my water. And now I'm going to move on and use blue. And I have this dark blue here, as you can see. And I'm going to use that darker blue. And again, scatter some waves of blue across. You can see I'm really adding quite a lot of water to my paint, using it in a pretty light, watery way always using my brush in a very squiggly way. And now I'm going to add the last layer to my water, which is uh, gray. I'm going to add a lot of water to my black paint to get kind of a gray. And I'm going to use that gray to fill in the white spaces that are left in my water. And I can overlap as well on top of some of the other colors that I had layered on before. And here's where you can make some choices as an artist about whether you want to really cover up a lot of those brighter colors that you had painted earlier, or whether you would like to um, leave them bright and showing up really well. It's up to you. But at this point, still keep using that really kind of wavy line to add your paint and think about filling in most of the uh, white spaces that are left on your water. Okay, and once you have filled in your water as much as you would like to with the layer of gray, we are then going to move on to the mountains. And the first color we'll use in the mountains is this kind of golden yellow. You can see I have two yellows, one very bright one here, and this one is a bit more of a brownish sort of golden yellow or ochre. And I'm going to add quite a lot of water to that and paint in some patches of golden around these hills that are close to the city and kind of filling in some of the little spaces between my buildings sort of adding this highlight of gold and imagining that again the sun is sort of peeking out from the clouds maybe just illuminating some of the layers of mountains that are closer up okay and then once you've painted in some golden patches we'll move on and use green. And I'm going to use this bright yellowy green now, not the dark blue green, but the bright yellow green. And I'm going to fill in some of these patches that I left around the buildings with this green, blending it with the gold as well. Try not to paint over top of my buildings, although the, the pastel will resist the paint and filling in just some of these lower, these hills that are a bit lower down in my picture. And then I'm going to move on and use my uh, darker green. And I will paint in the next layer of my mountains. And I like to kind of blend together the two greens a bit as well, using quite a lot of water on my brush to do that. So you can see my colors are getting a bit bluer and darker as I move into the hills that are further away. And then I'm going to move on and use the dark blue on my palette. And I'm filling in most of the rest of the mountains. However, I am still leaving some little white patches in the very far distance. And now for my last layer in my mountains, I'm going to add some water to my black and I'm going to fill in those final layers there in the distance with gray, blending that together with the blue. Thinking again about this idea of atmospheric perspective and how things that are furthest away look more blue and have less sharp detail within them. And there are my mountains. So once I'm done my mountains, I'm going to move on to the sky. The first thing I'm going to do in the sky is use this really bright yellow and I'm going to add a few little highlights of yellow coming out 
in these areas where I've made these kind of explosion lines, these little highlights. Again, thinking about maybe just a bit of that sunshine sort of poking through the storm clouds. And then I'm going to add a lot of water to this light blue at the bottom of my palette. I want it to be really watery and I'm going to use it to fill in the white spaces that were left inside my clouds. Just a very light wash of this light blue. And I will use that same really light blue and again add a few dashes of the blue in my sky here. And now as my very final step in my painting, I'm going to add a very light wash of gray to my sky, to the areas that are left white. And I want to add a lot of water to my black paint so that it's such a light shade of gray. I really want my sky to be lighter than my mountains so that it really glows. It's a really a part of the painting that glows and pops out. So just adding so much water to that black paint. And if I get a bit too much black on my paper, I can always just then dip my brush in the water, and lighten it up. And it's all right if some sections of my sky are a little bit lighter and some are a little darker. And once you have finished painting in the, the spaces or in your sky, painting this wash of gray, you have finished your painting. When you finish your paintings, display them as a class and take a look at your finished paintings. What differences and similarities do you notice amongst the finished paintings? And how did you and your classmates make use of layers and atmospheric perspective to create depth in your landscapes? At AFK, we would absolutely love to see your finished artwork. You could post images on Instagram and use the hashtag AFKArtReach, or you could send us images in an email. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you enjoyed making landscape paintings. Mm -hmm.